Gavin DeGraw. Hey, Gavin, I was watching some of this uh, this this docu series where you're road tripping, and I and I know that you also like to be in your bus. Do you hate flying? I, I just, this is like, would you hate flying, or you just like being on the ground? Uh, man, I don't really like airports. Oh, because I hate flying. I'm scared I, of planes. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, you're scared of people. It sounds like you know, I I, I don't like bad interactions and. Airports is like it's like a recipe for bad interactions with people. You know, you taught you me know? a lesson in an airport once. It was <laughs> a couple years ago. That's pre-pandemic, and I think we were sitting next to each other or near each other on a flight, yeah. and we had both been stopped going through the airport. But you were you were very efficient and very nice to people. And I'd be like, yeah, let's take. It. I would take like ten minutes, and you're like, no, here's what you do. You go, yeah, give me your phone, and you take the selfie for them, and you give them their phone back, and everybody wins. And so. <laughs> That's the move. That's the lesson. Yeah, your lesson was they're gonna be like, "Well, I can't get my camera right. I can't." He said, "You just take the phone from them. Yeah. You do that. You take the selfie because you know yeah. exactly how to do it. Then you hand their phone back. That's and true. Everybody wins. It's a lot faster, and it looks good because you control Cause you, it. Because you've been doing it a million times. Yeah, right. It, you know who who did it the best? Who I saw do it, and I was like, he's knocking this out of the park. Ed Sheeran. I was with Ed one night, and things were blowing up for him. And I was like, man, this guy's really good at this. Mm, look at that angle. Way to hold that phone steady. He's got it down. <laughs> I, got, I was like, got out the mole skin. I was like, mm, jotting it down on pen and paper, you know. I remember this, 30 degrees. I've passed your knowledge yeah. to multiple people. <laughs> yeah, the same way Ed taught you, you taught me, Gavin. So That's it's, amazing. it's going generationally at this point. Hey, man, let's do this. It's like you'll save time. You have Changing a better picture. Just say, hey, yeah, let's take a picture. Give me your phone. Boom, take it. All right, there we go. On to I the love next it. One. If you're not too heavily caffeinated, the picture's pretty good. Otherwise, it's what, a little shaky? A little, oh, little yeah, blurry, man, little... forget about it. The <laughs> caffeine hits me hard, man. I'll, I'll drink an eight balls worth of it, and I'll be I'll take this selfie for you, and it looks like an earthquake happened. <laughs> well, congrats on the new record, man. Thank it's you. so good. You know, Thank you. I was lucky enough that you sent it over to me because, you know, I'm just a fan of you musically anyway. Thank and, you. And, oh. I mean, it's, it's – and we're going to play something from it in just a little bit. Yeah. But also, and I'm not – Sure, if you know all who's been bragging about the record, but I would be considered like a half toaster. There's a there's a podcast called The Morning Toast, yeah, and they were play, they were bragging on it and playing it to a pretty wow. big podcast. And I was like, I know that guy. Wow, thanks. Man. Yeah, so I didn't I do didn't it. Know. Mine's right now, but theirs already happened. Well, thank th- I thank yeah. them too, man. Thank so you. the record huge. is uh, really great. So thank when you. this thing comes out, well, I guess before it comes out, like how long do you work on an album like this? And do you feel like musically, sonically, this is I don't want to say a change. It definitely feels a little more, in the loveliest way, like mature. Thank like you. Like th- this album. Do you feel that? Do you yeah. feel like that's an appropriate way to describe it? I think that's spot on. Um, you know, record came out on on the twentieth of uh, of May, and uh, you know, I'd been holding it back because um, I, I didn't know if it was the right time to put it out for a long time. I'd, it's been done for a long time. But, you know, the world was all upside down, and my, li- my personal life was all upside down. Um, and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sure when, when's the right time to put out new music, and um, when does it feel like the right time, and also at the same time, how, how am I going to serve the songs to my fans? Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to just launch this thing out, you know, out of a cannon and, and hope people heard it. And I wanted to kind of deliver it to them personally, and go out and play little rooms. Um, the, the tour I just did, um, I went out and I played rooms that were the size of the rooms I played before I ever had a record deal. Um, like the even on even on launch, the actual release day of the record, we played the Bitter End, which is the first place they ever gave me a gig in New York City. You know, it holds 150 people, 200 people. I just felt like being in those environments is the right way to serve the songs to people who've been with me for a long time. The audience is basically what changed my life, so I wanted to serve them the songs the way that I used to serve songs before I have had a record deal. Get up on stage, talk about the music, talk about my life, and you know, here's a song about it, and all these things happen, and then just make it rhyme, right? Um, <laughs> make it rhyme, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, making this record, it was heavily personal. You know, there's a lot of loss in the family. You know, I lost my mom and then two weeks later my grandma died and then six months later my granddad died and then COVID happened and then my dad got diagnosed and he died. And, you know, I'm watching all that stuff happen around me. But I wanted to finish the record while he was alive. I wanted him to hear the record. Uh, it was my, that was my timeline. My timeline was finish it for dad, right? Whenever, you know, hopefully before I lose him. So, 
uh, it wasn't going to be a business as usual album. It wasn't going to be, hey, let me write some songs and I hope I get some hit songs. And it just had nothing to do with that. It was just different. Um, the world was different. I'm different. And for me to go on and just do business as usual, cutting records just in, in hopes of, man, I hope it catches on. It just wasn't going to, it would be disingenuous. And I can't ignore the things that happened to me or to them or to every, the, the world as a whole, you know, and just launch a record and, 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 hey, this is so people dance. That's just not how I feel, you know. The world changed and, and, and I, I changed with it. I'm 45 years old. I'm a grown man. For me to go out just trying to, you know, do my happy dance would just be silly. Yeah, you know, I was listening to it again. I'd spent some time with it when you sent it to me. Then I was listening to it again. And this, the track that <clears> hit <throat> me always every time was uh, Chasing Wind. You know what's interesting, too, is Dave Cobb produced this, right? And yeah. Dave Cobb's worked with a lot of our favorite artists here oh, in town. Man, he's he's genius. Uh, I took a meeting. Uh, well, he took a meeting with me, which I didn't expect because, you know, who am I? And um, I met him in Mid Midtown here. And um, we did lunch, it was he and I, and I was expecting some old geezer to walk through the door because I'd heard his name so many times, you know, and he had so many hit records. But he walked in, he had cooler hair than me, and he was cooler than me, and and uh, probably younger than me. Um, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I need to get all this stuff out of my body, and I don't want to co-write with anybody. I want to go back to writing alone like I did with the first few records. Um but I think you're the best producer in the world for the kind of record I want to make. Um, and he said, with some expletives, let's do it. You know, and a couple weeks later we were in the room and, um, you know, he, he brought in some ace players and I brought in the best guitar player I know, this guy right here, Billy Norris, and uh, and uh, and we, we just started recording. And, um, and I, I think that Dave's influence over the record as a whole was something that took took it to to heights I couldn't have I couldn't have seen and um, my my vision for it was more linear than his um, his vision was much bigger than mine um, and he he really challenged me in the studio which I I really appreciated I think we all work better under pressure anyway you know I think everybody needs to have somebody kind of putting a thumb on them and uh, and challenging them and I, I think what he did uh, and what he demanded made the album a whole lot better than than I ever could. Gavin DeGraw is here. Got a new album, Face the River. We're going to play Ford in just a few minutes. But when I think about, you know, somebody just says your name, that, that, oh, Cherry. That, that <laughs> melody of Chariot yeah. just sits in, like, the, on the back when it's like, hey, wow. you know, I was listening to Gavin DeGraw, and immediately it's, oh, Cherry. That, 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 just that <laughs> melody. And I'm assuming when you, you. when you play, you play all, do you play all the hits like, at your shows? Yeah. You pretty much oh, right. Abso them? Absolutely. Yeah. Chariot was one of your first singles. I played it on radio. I was wow. one of, it was one of the early ones, right? Very early. Like yeah. 2005, 2006, back in, Some, back in that day? Somewhere in there. It was a funny little group of song. It, it, the timeline is really weird because the first song I ever released, um, I don't want to say it didn't do anything, but it didn't do anything. It was called Follow Through. And then uh, I got lucky with a song called I Don't Want to Be. And then uh, Clive Davis loved the song Follow Through so much. He goes, no, re-releasing Follow Through. So he wanted to launch it again. And uh, that time, for whatever reason, it was a hit. And then the next one was Chariot. And, so it was uh, in that first little little group. Yeah, but probably I around life was just, 05, 06. Everything's just flying so fast then, I'm assuming, at that stage of your career. You know, it's funny. I, <clears throat> I was always um, afraid to acknowledge any successes that were happening. Um, I was almost too busy to notice them, but as they were occurring, I was so afraid that they were going to disappear if I picked my head up to look in the rearview mirror and go, oh, well, cool, look, look what just happened, you know? Um, and, I, and I was, you know, I don't know, it's a personality type thing, man. I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. You yeah, know? Same, same, I get it. Yeah so, yeah, so, you know, even when big things were happening, I just thought it was, oh, we have to do this. We're doing this. It's great we're doing this, but we're doing this. I guess we're doing this because we have to do this because nothing's working yet. You know what I mean? And I don't know why it's a personality type thing, but, you know, you get on. You're lucky enough to come on at a show like this, me, and go, this is great. This is awesome. We definitely have to do this. Nothing must be working. <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead a little of knowing, this is a little awesome. neurosis there. This a little, is happening. Yeah, by a little lot of neurosis, because I live no with it. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah. No doubt about it. It's, it's fear. And, uh, 
and it's you know it's fear of failure and it's fear of hey man did I make all the wrong decisions and you know I joke about it with 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 friends of mine that I always feel like I'm I'm one one more bad decision away from just playing the lobby of some hotel in the middle of somewhere you know and uh you know that guy you know and uh you're just you just you don't have complete control of things you know you mentioned you got lucky with I don't want to be yeah again I was in pop radio at that point. I don't know it from One Tree Hill. Is that the show it's on? That's the yep. show? They had this, uh, yeah. I don't know it from that. I l- just know it from being played on the radio. So which, this mm. chicken or egg here, was it a single and then it got big and the TV show put it on or did the TV show and then it went from there? Man, you know, it's funny with that song because I thought that was the obvious first single. Uh, my brother was screaming up all the time at me, you know, in our apartment in New York. He's like, that's a single. What's wrong with people? You know, like, they need to put that out first. Um, but follow through is the one. And um, I got a phone call from a guy. The song hadn't been selected to be a single yet. And I got a phone phone call from a guy named Joe Devola. And um, Joe Devola said, hey, I want to use your song for a TV show. I said, nah, absolutely not. I don't even watch TV. TV's stupid, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's the New York, you know, East Village art, you know, snob at the time, you know? I was kicking around Alphabet City and, you know, 20 years ago, right? So <clears throat> I said, nah, I don't even watch TV. Who watches TV? And I don't want to be associated with it. He goes, listen, you got to help me help you. The song, I think, would be a big song, and I want to put it in a show. I said, nah, 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 I really appreciate it. You sound like a nice guy, but no thanks. He goes, okay, let me ask you another question. How much money you got in your bank account right now? And I was like, fuck you, bro. (laughs) (laughs) He starts laughing. And uh, he goes, listen, think about it. We're not going to touch the song. We're just going to put it in a place where people are going to hear it, you know? And that show wasn't on yet, right? It wasn't even on okay, yet. So, right. <laughs> yeah. And um, Follow Through apparently had been picked up and put in another show that was in pilot in pilot mode that never got, actually, never became big. I think Val Kilmer was in. It was about the porn industry. Follow Through. I don't know. But anyway, um, but yeah, I, I said, you know what? All right, this guy's right. Guys like me aren't going to be watching this stuff anyway and associate it with certain things. I'm not going to associate it with a teen show. I'm not a teenager, you know. I'm, I was 27 at the time. You know, I was an adult. But I said, all right, do it. You know what, man? Just do whatever you want with it. I appreciate it. And you know what? Just do it. Just do it. And sure enough, the, to- the song took off, and then I walked into the label, and uh, I had a meeting with Clive Davis, and he said... Uh, with everything happening around this sh- the show with the song, <laughs> you've heard Clive talk. Uh, the obvious next single would be "I Don't Want to Be," and I was like, "All right, great, this is awesome." You know, so the song I originally wanted is finally going to be the the single, and and it did. It, it took off, and you know, fortunately, that was a foot in the door in the door moment. You know, does that? I don't know. I. I obviously it got you to the place that you originally wanted, meaning it's kind of a weird way that it happened. For sure. You wanted it. They said no. You didn't want it to be on the TV yeah. show. Then you finally said yes, which yeah. got it back around to where you wanted it. Yeah. So, but do you look back at it being on the TV show and go, hmm, I wish I wouldn't have done it, or I wish I would have done it, or, or are you just like, you know what? Nailed it. It had to happen. The looking back thing's always tough. Uh, because I think if I would have made a different decision, I'd be looking back right now thinking I should have changed something else that, I, you know, based on what, wherever I was at at that, at that point, right? The, as they say, uh, no, uh, um, they say no battle plan ever survives combat, right? So, so and, you know, of course, no matter what changes I would have made back then, there'd be some other, something else I'd have to look back on now and say, I should alter this, I should alter that. But I, I think the association certainly at first was a great idea um it opened doors that were absolutely welded shut to me um because there were other artists who are always going to have priority at other labels you know I, I wasn't I, I wasn't um I wasn't Alicia Keys you know she was out you know a little bit before me but under the same uh same company uh I wasn't Maroon 5 they were out just before me 
with the same group of people doing the same marketing. So there are there were already a couple of acts here that were going to get the most attention, and I needed to find I had to find a window to to crawl through, um, and and that's that was the window. So then let me ask it to you this way: When yeah. people go, "Hey, I know you from One Tree Hill," that's the right. show, right? It yeah. is One Tree Hill. Sure. When people go, "I know you from One Tree Hill," you're like, "Oh." No, I say. That's awesome because you know but you that's cool. Okay. You know, yeah. to however me, you however you found me, however you found me, however you found me, you know the fact that you know twenty years later, someone's coming up to me saying they know me from a teen show, but they're still coming to my shows. That means somehow the the music is making them feel good yeah. still, right? And if they're only coming for that one song, hey, God bless them if they want to sit through two hours of music. You know, for me to <laughs> get, get to song. a song at the end of the night, <laughs> yeah. you know, then cool. You know, uh, there was, it, it, speaking of which, there's a, I think every artist probably goes through this. The first, um, the, probably the, on their first, uh, their first successful song. Oh, you're going to love this. Okay. So because I was having little success with that song early on, and uh, the song took off. It's a big hit, blah, 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 whatever. And people start coming to your gigs. So then, you know, for about, you know, for about six months, you start feeling pretty good. You're like, this is pretty cool. This is, I'm having some success, you know. Suddenly you feel like you're a little bigger, stronger, you know. Everything's bigger on your body, right, so to speak. And so I thought, let's play the hit early tonight. You know, let's do it like third. <laughs> Everybody's gone by the fourth song. <laughs> they heard it. They're you good. Can't, huh? You can't do that, you know? That's and everybody funny. who's left there is watching you just bored to death because they already heard what they came Play for. Play it again. That's it. <laughs> Dude, there, was a, there was like two or three gigs. I was like, I know what I got to do. I got to play this one again. That's funny. I'm going to play it again, you know? And uh, so the, those were growing pains. Those were those were real learning experiences, I think. And uh, just... Just stuff you got to be able to laugh at afterward because every act, every act that's had a big hit, I know they know what I'm talking about. Whether whether they decided I'm going to try it out and play the hit early or not, I don't know if they've all done that, but I know that they know the crowd is really coming for the hits. Do you? You got to play them, but you got to you got to pick pick and choose your moments. Do you? Did you ever have a stage where you disliked playing it? You played it so much? No. I've never, not ever. That's good. Not I'm about to ask time. you to play it. Thank God. Because gonna... <laughs> if he just said yes, no. I'd have been like, "Well, it's about to get real awkward." No, no, okay. no, no, literally. But you know, it's funny because I do know acts who talk about, oh, "I don't want to play my hits. I, I don't want to do those anymore." And and I think to myself, does this motherfucker know how lucky they are right now that they get to do this? You know, you got to pull them aside, be like, hey, listen, I, I know, you know, you've been doing this song every day since you wrote this song, but must I remind you, you have one of the only jobs in the world that when you get to clock out, people clap for you and tell you what a good job you did. You know, name another one. You know, name another job you could think of that at the end of your workday, people go, great job. That was amazing tonight. You know? You don't get that. Nobody right. gets that. You know, get up there and give them what they came for. You're so blessed to be able to do that. Or you, 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 you're, you have forgotten how, how, how tough real life really is. If you don't want to do a song for three and a half minutes for people who saved up three and a half months to drive three and a half hours to watch you sing that song, you know, fuck you. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, you know? uh, uh, Gavin DeGraw's here, and he's looking at me when he said that. I'm sorry, so, man. I'm it's like, to, to that me, that's so crazy yeah, that yeah, you would you would want to do that song. Listen, for as a fan, I'm glad that you feel that way, right? And let's get to the new stuff now. That's what we all came for. That's why we, that's why we drove three and a half right. hours. I don't want to hear him yelling at me again. <laughs> I was thinking about leaving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You leave after that. <laughs> it's so good, though. Watch everybody in the studio. We're out. We're gone. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so the song that I'd like for you to play, if that's cool, is Ford. It, it's from yeah. the new record. Would you give me a little setup on this? Again, you wrote it and oh, recorded yeah. it. So what led yeah. you to actually do both? Uh, well, this song's about sort of recognizing that you've been uh, 
caught up on the hamster wheel of life. And, you know, you have that revelation one day of, you know, my stuff owns me. I don't own my stuff. Why, why am I doing all this other work? Or why am I, why am I picking up this OT, these OTs? Why am I doing these other things to pay for things that I'm not even getting to enjoy because I'm spending all my time just paying for them, you know? Um, and you seek an advice. So, you know, I think if you're going to get advice, hopefully you get it from somebody that you love, somebody uh, uh, who's smarter than you and, and who's older than you um, because they're going to give you better advice. So this is, this is a, the song's a conversation uh, uh, about somebody looking for advice, asking some old dude, you know, what, what do I do? The record is an album that I would listen to if I wasn't working in music and had to listen to music for a living, right? I mean, that wow. that's the music I like. This, wow. this whole record is that, and wow, man. I encourage Thank people you, to Bobby. check it out. It's been out a few weeks. It's called Face the River. Uh, so many Thank good you. songs. And f- listen, the, the feeling that you guys probably got by hearing that song and that message, mm. those feelings are sprinkled all throughout the record for different reasons. Yes, sir. Because, I mean, you sing that song there, and it's like, dang, I should reevaluate my life and quit this job and walk off the air right now and, and go and spend time with my wife and, <laughs> Wait, screw, Bobby, and no. screw this place. Yeah, <laughs> But, you know, that's the kind of thing it is. Like, I'm spending too much time doing dumb crap. Mm. And that same kind of, oh, like punching the gut in a good way is all through the record. So great, wow, great job. You, it's a heck man. of a project. I appreciate it, man. I hate that thank so you. much crap had to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. for you to create this project, but I'm glad yeah. that you did it because I feel yeah. like hopefully it was therapeutic for you. Very, very. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. It, it, it's been, um, it, it was therapeutic writing it and it's, it's therapeutic recording it and therapeutic playing it every night. And it's been, um, it's been emotional playing it every night. Um, some nights are harder than others, you know. Um, but, but I feel like it's a message that I need to get out um and i think it's something really other people are relating to and you know when you lose people you you become part of this fraternity or this club that you never really want to be a member of um but we're we're all members of it um or gonna be and and i i just think you have to uh take it head on you know my father always told me run to the lion and I and I think you just have to take you just have to take everything head on, everything that you're worried about, everything that, that's scaring you, everything you that you that you were putting off. There has to be a moment where you turn and you go to it. Um, and I and I, I just needed to go to it. You did. It's it's again beautiful art. Thank you. Man. Tragic circumstances, beautiful art, and just uh, don't stop doing it. You know, Thanks, man. don't stop Appreciate doing it. it. Uh, Gavin DeGraw is here. Uh, you guys check out the record. It's Face the River. The There's a six-part docuseries on Facebook yeah. that you guys did about road tripping as you're making, you, like, the creative-ish process. Well, it was after the uh, <clears throat> after the uh, record was made, I got to go out and do do another road trip. Cause I like road tripping. You know, I, I said, do, I, I, I like I do, flying. I, I, Except I, I don't like being in the air. I, I I wish I could fly on the ground. Dude, Does that make sense? That's the move. That's man. what I was saying. Why can't we invent that? <laughs> that's that. That's the move. Why can't I fly know? on the ground? We're supposed to see the world from about five to six feet above the ground. Yeah, right where our head is. Right where our feet that's are right. on it. <laughs> that's exactly yes. right. Uh, you guys check that out, and and that's gonna be it for now. Um, <laughs> my absolute favorite song of yours is "Not Over You." Wow. Do you still like that one or no? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love it. I wrote that with Ryan Tedder. I did not know that. Yeah, I wrote with Ryan Tedder and uh, the spark of it. One Republic guy, by the One way. One Republic, yeah. yeah. Super, just a wonderful uh, pop songwriter, specifically just a, a genius at pop. And uh, we, um, he first played me that riff, the piano riff up top. That, um, that Come on. Line, right? That thing. We were in um, Blackbird uh, Studios in, here in Nashville. He goes, yo, man, what do you think of this? He just sat at the piano and doing this. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin DeGraw, you guys follow him. Listen to the record over and over again. Face the River. You will find your own story inside of it. He created music. It doesn't have to be the exact same story that you're living. 
Uh, I find songs a lot of times that speak to me in different ways than it was originally mm-hmm. written, and it speaks to me the same way that it was supposed to speak to me. So great, wow. great body of work. Gavin wow, DeGraw. Man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Bobby. you guys. Appreciate Thank you. It, man. There he is. Thanks, so yeah. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks a lot, guys. It's about-